all right so it's a couple days later now um and i just spent the past couple days doing some minor tweaks to this that i'll cover here and then we'll get right into the uh color compositing and uh add in sound modeling wise i added in walls up here and decided to not show a ceiling i also took some of these vertices inside the barrel here and moved them um, further in to hide a bit of a seam in the texture and then I tweaked the general camera movement uh, just a little bit more to, to fit. In terms of the simulation, I slightly lowered the initial velocity of the mesh. I also tweaked a bit of the timing and the flow for this initial barrel flow object. I ran into a little bit of an issue with particles appearing to float above the ground plane here, and I just fixed that by taking the liquid domain and moving it uh, down a little bit. For rendering, I added in this empty object here and animate it along where I wanted the focus to, to be. And then I, in the camera settings, selected that to be the focus object and added an f-stop of uh, 1.0 for depth of field. And then of course, remember to loop those values as well so that the focus uh, loops properly. I also ended up adding a light source inside of the barrel itself here because I found that near the end of the simulation without any particles inside here to emit, this was completely dark and the lighting just did not match at all. So I added in a light to just help make it more seamless for the loop. I ended up extending the ending timing a little bit more to give more time for the particles to leave and for there to be more buildup with the camera movement in. I also ended up rendering at 120% uh, quality just to boost this to full HD resolution and then I have my final render at 250 samples here. The biggest change I made though was officially moving it to 230 frames per second. So I really meant I just had to move the audio clips around and then I went through each object that was animated and set it to the first frame and then I just literally uh, pressed A to select all of the keyframes, S to scale and I scaled everything by 1.2 to match it from 25 to 30 frames per second because 30 frames is 120 percent of uh 25. so i did that for everything that was keyframed and then i also had to remember to uh go into the camera and then all the things that we added a noise modifier to i just went into this restrict frame range and i multiplied all these values by 1.2 as well which you can actually just like directly type in times 1.2 yeah and then that was pretty much it so let's go into Da Vinci real quick and I'll show you my process for compositing this all together. So inside DaVinci let's find our files here and if the sequences aren't showing up as one individual video file then you just need to go up to here and hit flame display mode and make sure it's set to sequence instead of individual or auto. This way you'll definitely get this and we'll also drag this into here which i'll explain in a second this workflow does work for other editing programs like premiere if you are using premiere i don't think it supports exr files so you'll just want to make sure you render it out as a jpeg instead um, if you are rendering an exr you'll notice that the color space has changed a bit so before we forget on both of these clips we'll want to select them both and go to lut and change it to a linear to gamma 2.2. That's gonna give us the standard color space that Blender uses. Additionally, we'll also wanna to go to clip attributes and uh, click this so it does it to both of these and change the frame rate to 30 frames a second. Once we do that, we can create a new timeline using selected clips, double check that it's actually choosing the, the resolution that you want it to be. And it actually shouldn't be 1920 by 1080, but instead 1440 by 1080. And we'll switch this to 30 frames a second. Yeah, so let's go ahead and create this. Oops, I actually dragged in the wrong clip. There we go. So now you can see full playback and everything in here. So let's make this loop. If you remember in Blender, we actually had we under rendered some extra frames. So let me just remember how many frames actually rendered. It looks like we wanted the cutoff to be at 816, but we rendered to 840. So that's a difference of 24 frames. So if we just go to this clip, we can move this back 24 frames, just reading that number there. And that way, if we select this, hit Alt and drag, it'll duplicate it. And we can double check to see if this seam works. Nice. So there's a little bit of a light jump um, and obviously the particles here haven't fully disappeared. That was another thing I'll say, I could not figure out for the life of me was how to get these particles to go completely transparent. Isaac from the future here and I actually have just figured it out. What you need to do get to get rid of these black splotches here for the particles is quite literally just crank the transparent settings all the way up. Like even this, this is at like level 50 samples 
and just you can slowly crank it up and you can see it slowly starts to disappear it wasn't until i got it all the way to 80 samples that i got it completely disappearing like this but anyways yeah that is that <laughs> i had to do a little bit of a workaround which is why we have this piece here so this piece is a version of the ending that actually has no particles whatsoever so we can kind of more quickly um, fade into this so that the particles actually disappear instead of just leaving this kind of black smudge here um, so it makes it a little bit more complicated to get this loop but essentially the concept is the same as we just we're taking this and then we need to have that uh, we'll add just a little bit of a fade and because we have these extra frames here we can go into a f we can go into our effects uh, video transitions cross dissolve and just add that into here and that way it kind of will fade in but because we have this slightly more complicating factor here we actually need to let's just move this down real quick and line these two up and then this way we can cut them both at the same time here and then let's see when do we want it to start fading and we probably want it to start fading out right about here it looks like oops so we'll just select this one and i'm hitting shift q to trim the, the front end of this uh shift w will trim the back end um so do this and then let's add a cross dissolve in here so it slowly fades over it why don't we just take this and move it down over here and then instead of having, we can just have the cross dissolve go over it like that and then we can delete this select both of these drag them over I ended up retiming also when this comes out so it can so it comes out a little bit earlier so it matches up better with the music uh that does mean that we really don't have much to be able to fade over um so it's going to be a pretty quick fade out could have been planned maybe a little better but you know what we are here now um and let's drag this over so it kind of looks like it's just brightening up but it's just a little bit softer of a a bright brightening part and i actually want this here especially because we'll instead of having the you know the loop start here i'm going to render it out so it starts here with a bit more of a slow build up before we get this liquid here all right so now that we have that let's actually move this up and then have this looping oops and then add this cross dissolve into here all right now in theory that is a nice perfect loop um and then we'll just take this whole thing and loop you again um we'll go and remember it's two frames of a cross dissolve here so if we just need to add that cross dissolve back in here again just please remember what even though you duplicate it, it doesn't uh, duplicate the cross dissolve because it doesn't have anything to cross dissolve at the end of this so two frames, bada bing, bada boom. So there we have it. It's about four good loops here. Well now actually, let's take a second and see what it looks like with audio. And to get the audio, what you wanna do is go into Blender, go into video editing, and you just wanna export this timeline in here. But if you try to export it like this, it's gonna actually start rendering the, the scene itself. So what you wanna do is go into add and add in a color and just drag this color up and have it cover the entire length of this and that way it doesn't actually try to render the scene but it'll just render a black screen so if you do that and then select a ffmpeg um, mpeg4 and audio aac and then you command f12 you'll render it out as a full mp4 file that you can just drag right into here um and I've already done that, so let's just, let me go back into here. I believe it is this one. Um, so we'll drag this over you here. And then to just select one of these, I hit Alt and drag, and I'll select only one or the video or the audio level. So we can scroll this up, go into our timeline, make sure the audio waveform is showing in our timeline settings too. And wonderful, let's turn on magnet here. So it snaps. And we can double check that this audio is actually lining up.
All right, now we can just take that, duplicate it over. Uh, da, 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 da. We probably should have done this before we duplicated them all, but it is okay. And we're just hitting again, alt drag and duplicates. Bada bing, bada boom. Nice. Um, we only really need these middle two ones here. It's just it's slightly important to have this crossfade at the start. And so if we really start over here, there's nothing to crossfade with. So you don't actually want, um, if you want a perfect, perfect loop, you don't want to start um, the export here, but you want to start it right in here. But we'll get to that in a second. Right now, let's get into some color in. So let's just pick a good point. Go into our color tab, make sure your clip is still selected here. I'll admit I'm not a professional colorer. So for something like this, I'll pretty heavily rely on a lot. I like the idea of going with a film look for digital renders. Before we can really apply this, it needs to have the color space uh, transformed. On this first node, um, let's just rename this as CST because we're gonna take a color space transformer, apply it to here and we're going to change the output color space to rec709 and output gamma to where is it? Cineon, Cineon film log. So just make it a bit flatter. And then if we hit alt S to add another node, we can take uh, one of these that we like and apply it. Dun, 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 dun. So I like these, but they are giving it a very all blue look. And I don't really want it to be blue, but we can adjust that. Like I want it to be nice and soft, but not this blue. All right, so we'll drag this on there. And you can kind of see if you press uh, Control D, it'll um, disable or enable the, the nodes. Oh, it is not giving live feedback. There we go. Okay, if we have to press this so it actually gives live feedback. We can see without, with. So we'll name this, you know, the LUT. I wanna make it a little bit more green. So before the LUT really gets to it, let's just add another node in here and adjust this to be a bit more blue. So we can go to this web here while we're selecting this and take these values that might be a little bit green and just move them all the way to be green. So, because you can kind of see what happens by just enabling, disabling this is it's really stretching this. So initially all of these values are kind of already in the screen channel and then they're pulling it more towards blue. So the more that we can do here to like move it even further away, you see it was blue. Now it's a little bit more green. There we go. It's kind of nice. It's very, very green though. Um, but that's a little bit better than just straight blue, you know? All right, it does make this pretty white. Move the entire thing more to green. There we go, that's nice. Oh, okay, yeah, I like that. And then there's still some blue in here, but it's all feels a bit more natural. You can see kind of here, this is after, it's before. And I'm also now noticing it's making it a lot brighter and I kind of liked how dark it was. So if we hit Alt S, add in another node here and go into curves. Let's just darken this down a little. And then maybe raise that to punch it. Again, I would definitely look at some more professional lighting tutorials or, or coloring tutorials for this type of thing. But these are kind of the basics of my sense for something like this. Yeah, all right, that looks pretty good. The main other important thing for this is actually adding motion blur. So we can add something in after the LUT and let's just motion blur and da Vinci has a pretty good motion blur analysis yeah so let's just make it set it to better and usually that is good it's gonna make it a bit slower to lag to to load but you can see it does a lot yeah it does a lot for image and then the last thing I want to do here is add in a little bit of glow so we can get some halo in here so we'll go in, add glow, and yeah, let's so we can play around with these values here. Just enough, just a little bit. Yeah. Because as much as I love cycles, it doesn't do the best with having glow. 
it does make this get fully blown out but honestly i'm okay it's it's magic oh we could go in and re-render this and animate you know the emission value for this for these particles here maybe i will do that for a final final one of these future isaac again here and i did end up um transitioning this emission value so it doesn't have a flare up right here and to do that i just took this and i quite literally added keyframe here one a couple frames more keyframe there and then i actually also made a slight change to use this as input for when they become transparent i realized the darker one should become more transparent first so i took this and multiplied it by this random value before it reaches this color ramp here so you can think of it as these darker values here close to zero are multiplying it down which is bringing a little bit which is bringing more particles closer to the left side of this as this left side equals zero this right side equals one and so as it closer to the left side it's actually flipping it and turning all these ones that are closer to zero into this one value here which is um feeding into this and turning it into the transparent bsdf i also added a map range here because i didn't want it to become transparent immediately as a particle became this dark i found that just made too many transparent particles too quickly so i added a buffer and i used a map range to map from zero to one and map it instead to zero to five and that pretty much is just taking this and um you can imagine it's like invisibly sort of extending it over this way so it's not completely following the pattern so you get still get a little bit of these darker color values here before it turns transparent but yeah that is essentially it and let's get back to it so yeah that's pretty much what i do for it in terms of color if we go back into the edit the color is only applied to this one so if we select a clip hit Control c copy it and then select everything and hit alt v it's going to do a special paste and this we can go to video attributes color correction and let's also do plugins and fusion effects sometimes it doesn't get all of the all of the effects that we want in there so let's just double go in here double check that it's got all the color stuff we want yeah nice at this point we can go in and start adding some sound effects it's not too too much i want to do with sound here it is a very very important but i think something my my main thinking is having something that's like a little bit of a whoosh for the particles going away here maybe even like almost a sand blowing as the as the particles are hitting against this metal tin here and then maybe like a little bit of like an eerie creaking sound before the particles come in here um th there's theoretically a lot of like swooshing and sounds in here that you can add um it takes a lot of time to add that beat by beat um which i might i might do that a little bit but the in the end they generally get drowned out by the music so the main thing is just going to be having some type of whoosh for this ending beat and some sense of a flow like water lapping um onto a seashore yeah so let's go in um and find some of those sounds in art list let's just type in a whoosh and maybe a sand let's see what we get here drag all these over here and then we'll drag these in i like to create an assets folder generally boom boom drag these in here and yeah let's um let's just work so press in um we can set some in and outs so let's go in here and i'll press in down on the arrow key to go to this point. Let's just skip around a bit and press o to set an out point let's just build up a sound escape for this section here actually no wait we want it to really be starting in here pretty much yeah because we want the build up to start here so maybe right here we actually want our end point and then it'll be somewhere in here we want our out um to get a precise tell for this we can actually go into just any generator and quickly get a time we drag it between this distance here 
we know that it needs to be out by this same distance here. So we can set the out point there. Sweet. Um, and we'll just disable that. We might need it for later. We'll see. All right. So let's work on just creating a soundscape here. Uh, let's go in here, select this, and disable it. So we can really just focus on this. Actually, let's just drag everything in here, and we can kind of order it out once we see that. Let's just kind of move these out over here. We'll kind of get some of these ambience pieces. Ambience, ambience, ambience. Um, boom, boom. That works. Alright, sweet. And yeah, let's listen to this. First. So it's a creak sound. Nice. Okay. Um, so I really like this as our base ambience. Let's drag this in a little bit. And then maybe there's this creak sound in here that we could really faintly add in when the water comes in. Or when the, or when the particles come in. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's nice. And then we'll make sure it fades out. Over here. So we can kind of just drag this and have it fade out slowly. There we go. Bring up our mixer so we can see what the audio levels are like. Honestly, lower this even more. Oh, that's kind of neat. I like the idea of maybe that starting once the once they're kind of like coming in and here and hitting it, they're kind of shaking the barrels a little bit. So it's really coming in right in there. Yeah. Just so it feels like it's reacting a bit to the barrels, or the barrels are reacting to it. But I think we can lower this down even much, much more. Make it really subtle. Okay, maybe not that subtle. Sweet. And then it should probably fade out at the same time. The particles fade out. So right up here. Awesome. Alright, it's good for rough placement. Let's drag these in. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, that's nice. That feels like a good... Ooh, is that a build up or build out? Or a fade out? Alright, let's see what the other stuff we have. Ooh, I like this sand. Yeah, this sand is going to be great for the end. Ooh, maybe like a beginning and ending sand. That's also a good friend. Okay. So let's just start. Let's have that be the beginning one. This be the ending one. We'll have this for the end as well. And that would be a good intro. Kind of as the liquid is coming up to form the, the dancing person. And that would be an outro as the dance ends. Both of those would be. So we'll put that over here roughly. <laughs> oh, this would be also be a good outro. Or for the fading out. So we'll take both of these. Put you all in there. These are all for fading out. It's also for fading out. Ooh, I like that. It's like a build up before we even see the particles. Oh, that's great. Okay. So kind of just grouping them like this. Ah, okay. I'm less happy with the liquid stuff now. <laughs> okay, that's great. Let's do that for this opening build up. So we have these roughly timed here. We have lots of stuff, lots of stuff for the end. So let's go a little chronologically. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so we'll lower this a little bit. Kind of keep it contained here. That works really well. 
and we'll press D to disable this. I know we want this to be timed up. Right about in here. Yeah, because it's coming in right, this is where the beat drop is. Um, okay, it's getting a little bit laggy here, so one tip if your timeline is getting laggy is let's just export this <laughs> and then we'll drag it back in so it's not having to read uh, individual EXR files, which take a little bit more to render. But while I, before I forget, we're not really using it for this project, but if you ever wanted to really use the true power of EXR files within DaVinci, all you have to do is select your XR sequence, go into Fusion, and if you're selecting your media in, you can actually select which layer you want to be viewing. So you can actually just look at a mission or just look at you know, whatever layers you ended up rendering there. I thought I was going to use a mission for this, but I realized it was kind of overcomplicating it because we can just add the glow effect already and, and change the threshold. But uh, yeah, just to know in the future, that's how you uh, view different EXR files. And then you can also like you just take this and make multiple layers of it and make them all each different uh, view layers to composite on top of each other. Anyways, let's just get back to rendering this out real quick. QuickTime H24, this all works. We'll just call this warehouse render for audio. Save into the roughs, add to render queue, render all. We didn't really need to render the audio with this, but we'll just mute it. Anyways, when we pull it back in. All right, now that's rendered, we can go back into here, grab this, pull it in here, and bam. Delete the audio, just throw it on top of here. There we go. Now it won't, now it'll go much quicker. That's interesting. Alright. Move this here instead. Oh, that's neat. I like that. Um, let's see what they both sound like together. Interesting. This one feels like it's a bit... It's a bit delayed. There we go. That works. Alright, that was a lot. Alright, now let's go into these ending sounds here and see what we like disable disable let's just get that ending sound so we can disable all these sands all right and then disable these here oh that that's pretty well timed already all right sweet so i like that that feels a little cartoonish so no Ooh, it's a little dramatic. It's also about the same. Okay, let's... Maybe... We, I like having a little bit of a fade-off. So maybe have this be really low. And then this is a little bit higher in the mix. That's kind of nice. Um, And let's see what this is like. Alright, so this would be the fall-off afterward. Of all these particles coming down. Blow this more. Vibes. Alright, and let's see what the sand is like. Nice. Alright, I really like these sand sounds. And as long as we don't have these overlap in here, it'll make our lives a lot easier for looping later. All right, let's see what these the rest of these sand sounds look feel like. Although let's disable these first. I like that. Um, and then we can kind of use one of these other versions of the same one. Nice. And if we add it with all these. I like that. Okay. Alright, so now we can take this sandy boy here 
and put you at the start. When this comes in. Nice. Oh, I like that. Okay. I like that a lot. Um, but I'm not super happy with how it's, we're not getting any reaction to this here. So maybe honestly, this sound could be our build up for that. It's kind of a. Ooh, yeah, I kind of like that. All right, now let's see what it sounds like if we turn on the music. Uh, yeah, or I guess hear what it sounds like. <laughs> I really love that. We're gonna need to remember to fade out these so they don't create a bit of a weird audio cut when we loop them. Other than that, I think it really just needs a little bit more of this sand sound throughout it. Let's take this, oops. Honestly, just duplicate this over. It's so specific enough that I feel like it should be fine. We'll see, Let's see how this sounds. Nice. All right, I really like that. Actually, I might want to lower the music volume at first. It feels, what if we adjust this? We can make it a little bit lower, so it's a bit more of a dynamic impact when that comes in, but then also make it sound a little bit more distant, you know? Um, what is gonna be the easiest way to do that? Let's go into effects and there's reverb and limiter, I feel like are the ones I'm most familiar with. Let's see, we just want to make it, I want to make it feel a little bit more distant, so. This makes it feel a little bit more. Sounds good. And then let's add a little bit of reverb. Um, just make this a little smaller. Oh wow, that's a big effect. Okay, let's make this a little drier. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know what a lot of these things really mean. They're just kind of play around with them until I find something that works. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I like that. All right, yeah, that is it. Thank you for sticking around to the very end here. You know, well, I hope if you are somehow listening to me at this time, we, you, uh, you've taken all something away from this, but if not, let me know. I mean, uh, this is honestly my first time doing a longer form tutorial like this where I'm talking as I'm going through the project. So if you have uh, feedback, please do tell me, or if there are improvements to, you know, what we actually did, if there was some, if there's an easier way to do something here. Um, but beyond that, have a great rest of the day. Enjoy simulating and please send me any stuff that you make with this. You know, you can shoot me an Instagram message at Isaac.gaz. Wonderful. All right. Peace. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, don't forget to. Oh man, am I am I gonna say don't forget to <laughs> hit the subscribe, like, comment thing? Is <sighs> it's been a while since I've recorded a YouTube video, so I, I it feels weird to say that now. But yeah, I don't know. Do do that if you want or not. Um, but yeah, actually, no. Yeah, I mean, it'd, it'd be nice. You know, it'd be cool if you could subscribe if you weren't already but ah, who am I to tell you what to do with your life all right bye bye